From the center of the universe, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, this is the SDM Show with your host, Rob Cairns. The SDM Show focuses on business, life, productivity, digital marketing, WordPress, and more. Sit back, relax, grab your favorite drink, and enjoy the show. Here is Rob. I'm Rob Cairns. I'm the founder, CEO, and chief creator of Amazing Ideas at Stunning Digital Marketing. Today, I'm going to go down the WordPress historical memory lane with a guy that many of us consider the WordPress historian, Mr. Jeff Chandler. And we are going to talk all about WordPress history. Sit back, relax, grab a drink, and enjoy the show. This podcast is sponsored by Stunning Digital Marketing, the agency that can help protect your WordPress website today. Go to stunningdigitalmarketing.com and see what we can do to help you protect your business investment. That's stunningdigitalmarketing.com. Hey, everybody, Rob Cairns here. And today I'm here with my guest, Mr. Jeff Chandler, who works over Stellar WP. How are you today, Jeff? I'm doing fantastic. And the last time I checked, the Toronto Blue Jays are about to get swept. Yeah, well, I think that happened the night before this record. So <laughs> I somehow figured you were going to sneak a baseball reference into this podcast somehow, oh. somehow. Well, and for anyone out there listening and watching, Rob specifically told me before the show started, as long as we don't talk about baseball, we'll be fine. So now yeah. that I've already got him in a good mood, this should be an excellent episode. Yeah, I'm, I'm in a great mood. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> there anyway, so today I thought we'd do something different. Um, we, the community's been through a lot, but I don't even want to get into any of that stuff. What I kind of want to do was do a look back and talk about the history of WordPress and kind of what's gone on. And um, you started a wonderful website back in the day called WP Tavern. Correct. Yeah, it was about 2000. I launched it officially 2009 in January. And uh, it was a gracious Leo's was from a of a domain that was available. It was donated by Kyle Eslick, who at the time was running the website WPHacks.com. And I wonder if any OG listeners actually remember that website, WPHacks, but it was one of the websites that was, do you remember? Yeah, I do. Wow. Wow. So, so you go way back. Um, but that was one of the websites that was continuously uh, showcasing hacks and code snippets. And it was just one of a collection of websites at the time because WordPress was young but there's a collection of websites devoted to WordPress that was just all about sharing knowledge. We were all sharing every, it seems like we were all learning WordPress at, at around the same time. So anything that we learned, we were publishing on our blogs and helping other people discover how to change parameters in a plugin or how to edit a functions.php file or, you know, how to add sidebars or register sidebars and themes. And I got to tell you, it's, you know, when we talk about, the history of WordPress and in and, and some, in many aspects, when I look back on it, it's like, I want to say a lot, a, a big part of me wants to say those were the good old days, but then yeah. that kind of, when I say that, that means that there's not going to be days ahead in the future that are going to be better than what we've experienced. And I, and that's unfair to be able to, to write the future that way. So uh, I'll just say that in the past, uh, my my time in history and involvement uh, near the beginning of WordPress was just a fantastic time, nothing but great memories. And I haven't been able to feel something like that in a long, long time. WordPress has matured. The community has matured. I mean, we're talking about people who have been involved with WordPress for 10, 15, you know, we're going on 20 years now. And, and so uh, the honeymoon period of everything being new and fresh and everybody learning and, and sharing those things that we're learning is just not, it's just not the same. It's not what it used to be. And, 
it's not that it should be what it used to be because things evolve, but I really wish that we could get back to everybody sharing snippets and sharing what they're, what they've learned or, or what they're learning, not only for their, for, for current you, but for future you, because, you know, I can't tell you how many times I've looked for things on, on the internet and it's like, Oh, I wrote about this on my blog and thank God I published it. Future me was very happy that past me uh, decided to do that. But, um, but yeah. Yeah. And you ran a tavern up until what year, Jeff, give or take. Cause you, you did sell it eventually. About 2013, I sold it to Matt Mulloweg, and he acquired it from me. And then I ended up working under Matt uh, for Audrey Company, his uh, subsidiary and his investment company that he has. So I worked under him for for a couple of years. And we hired on Sarah Gooding. And uh, Sarah Gooding just recently surpassed 10 years of writing on WP Tavern, which is which is insane to me because man, it's like, wow, it feels like it was only yesterday, but she's been there now for 10 years, man in the ship. And Sarah's done actually a pretty good job manning that ship. I think. You know, oh yeah. Yeah. She, she's awesome. She's awesome. She's been a, uh, she's exactly what the tavern needed at the right time. And the tavern evolved into something that just, uh, as far as my involvement and, and why I left the tavern evolved into something that just, I didn't fit the, the mold of what the site uh, turned into. So it was just uh, at the right time. I just had to part ways with it and, and go do something else. But, but Sarah's didn't, Sarah's done an absolute and is doing an absolute fantastic job with the WP Tavern website. And it's yeah, still one of the most reputable WordPress websites out there in terms of if you want to know what's going on in a non-biased fashion in the WordPress world, that's where you go. Yeah, I, I would agree with you wholeheartedly. Um, also worth mentioning, that was when you first jumped into podcasting, wasn't it? Was was when you were running the tavern with, uh, what was it, WordPress Weekly or something along that mm -hmm. line? Yeah, so back in 2009, uh, I started a, a podcast called WordPress Weekly. And the inspiration behind that was at the time, there were not that many WordPress podcasts out there, but there was kind of one official one. Um, it was called, uh, I want to say, I want to say the WP community or yeah. I'd have, Oh, I'd have to, I have to think back, but I know it was the host was Charles Strickland and I believe his co-host was David slash Malcolm Peralti. I want to say that's, that's who was doing the shows at the time. And, and I was getting so involved with WordPress that I, when they would talk about stories, I knew them in depth. I knew what, what people were saying, what people were talking about. And I wanted to talk about them for a long time, but on his podcast, you know, he, he was running, he's doing maybe like a 30 minute format and he couldn't get as deep as I felt. He, he wouldn't get as deep into the topics that I really wanted to get into. So I, at the time, there's a website called talkshoe.com and man, talkshoe, it was a, uh, <laughs> it was a service where you got a pin number and the podcast were run over a phone line. So yep. the audio quality was crap, but because of how it worked, you were able to give out a phone number. They would put in the pin number, which was tied to your show. And then you could have callers. You could have callers call in and take questions like a radio show. And uh, at the time, Growing the WP Tavern community and and doing WordPress Weekly, I started the show there, and I ended up having guests on there every week. And we would go one hour, two hours. There was no set time limit where we could go as deep as we wanted to into a topic, and there were no rules in terms of the podcast. Just end it when we thought we could end it. And there were times where we had a one or two hour show about stuff, and we would have a three, four, five hour after show because people just hang out and we just talk about stuff because there wasn't really anything like that at the time. You know, nowadays, what do we have? We got Twitter, you got your Facebook, you got your Google Meets, you've got your Zooms, you got your Telegrams. All of that stuff really wasn't a thing uh, back in 2008, 2009. So, uh, so yeah, so I got involved with podcasting there and uh, <laughs> I remember Brad Williams helped me out. We had a cohort, I had a cohort of uh, different uh, uh, guest and I did ended up publishing over 300 episodes over the lifetime of that show and it was so nice when I eventually evolved to YouTube because then if I actually had audio quality but it's amazing to me that for as long as I did the show 
I had so many fans that really didn't care about the audio quality. They cared more about the content. And that and that's something that's always stuck with me. Yeah, I, I agree with it. There was talk show back in the day, and the other place a lot of shows were being done was broadcast.com, believe it or not. Yeah, yeah. And there, and there was a, there was another one too, like uh uh Blog Talk Radio. That was Blog another talk. big one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they were the big three back in the day before we had all these podcast RSS feeds and podcast hosts and now it's so much easier for somebody non-technical to get into the podcast game. That has changed so much. Um, and now we time, sound so much better because it doesn't sound like we're talking over tin cans attached to a, a string. <laughs> That's that, what talk you was. That is so true. Um, at the tavern, what is the most satisfying story that you ever covered back in the day? Put you on the spot. Well, the, the, the most satisfying story I ever did was the story of uh, Headway Themes and you know what? what was I'm going. Gonna, I'm going to stop you. I was going to go there. And say, <laughs> that's my favorite story you covered. So go ahead. Tell it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, for those who don't know, there was some inkling. Some people had contacted us, uh, specifically me, highlighting the fact that certain contractors and employees weren't getting paid. Mm -hmm. And this was an issue that was going on for a while. And so I started investigating things and I started asking around, joining slacks and trying to get to the bottom of it. And through uh, a bunch of different blog posts and collaborations and working with Sarah and some of the contractors, uh, uh, come to find out that Headway Themes was, was bleeding money and it was getting to the point where they didn't have the money to pay their contractors. And their contractors were working for free for a prolonged amount of time. And those contractors had no idea if they were ever going to get paid ever again. So I published a couple of posts about the story on WPTaver.com. I think Sarah may have published a story related to Headway Themes during the whole saga. And what ended up happening was the founders, uh, the big founder, the Griffiths, there was uh, Clay Griffith and his son. Um, no, Grant Griffiths was the father. Clay Griffith was his son. It was a father-son team, and he had apologized, and he sent out a big post apologizing to everybody and, and kind of explain what was going on. And to make a long story short, the contractors did end up getting paid, and the company ended up kind of disappearing, and Headway Themes was supposed to be in a process of trying to get sold off or acquired. As far as I know, that never happened. But because of Sarah and I's coverage and, and applying that kind of uh, media pressure for them to, to do right. Uh, they ended up doing right by their uh, contractors. And I'm happy to say that uh, they were both, they were all paid in full and they ended up getting jobs at other places and I've kept in touch with them and they're doing great. Yeah, it was a story. And, and I think knowing how that one played out and being in the user community, I was a headway user at the time. I'll tell you that now. And, and, and I got, and I got to say headway themes, looking back on it, if we look at Gutenberg today, and then yeah. if anybody out there, if you used Gut uh, Headway Themes back then, Headway Themes was by far ahead of its time. It, it, no it, it could have easily been the Gutenberg just maybe five years, six years too early. Yeah, I think so. I don't think it was marketed well. I don't think it was shared well. And I've got friends in that community, AJ Morris, who was in that community at the time and working for Headway is a, is a good friend. And I know several other people. And yeah, it was just a mess. And interestingly enough, in the last year and a half, the website finally went down for Headway Themes, too. It was. Still oh, oh, so it's not accessible anymore? No, I don't think so. So if you go, okay. So because one of the things, one of the issues was that even even months after the apology and months after the contractors left, the website was still online. And as far as I could tell, they were still, it was still accepting payments from people. If they just happened to stumble onto that website and purchase headway themes, the payment would have gone through for a product that was essentially dead, which to me was that, that rubbed me the wrong way. That's, that's not how you're supposed to, to sunset things or, or, or go out of business. But, well, one of the one of the interesting things, Rob, when we talk about WordPress community, yep. during that time, during that coverage of Headway Themes, and the way I, I 
Look, I, I understand and I respect the fact that I was reporting on a father son team that this was family that was involved and and there was there is an angle there to, to cover and, and to be cautious with. Uh, but when I wrote these articles, someone actually contacted me. Actually, there's a few other people commenting that what I was doing was called witch hunting by continuously writing about updates about what these two were doing and what the company was doing, that I was actually witch hunting the owners of this business, which couldn't be farther from the truth. And those same people who said that I was witch hunting had personal relationships with these two gentlemen. So I, I believe I know where that perspective was coming from. But you know, at the time, I kind of showed you that in the WordPress community, you've got these clicks or what some would say the good old boys where they're out to protect each other. But look, if you're running the business and by and large, you're screwing over customers, you're screwing over your employees, that is wrong. And if, and the job of the media is to try and apply pressure and to right those wrongs. And that's what we did. And we were successful at it. And if I, if I had to go back and do it again, I absolutely would. Yeah, I would tell you at the time I had a bit of a relationship with Grant. And I would say, I don't think you were witch hunting. I think you were just trying to do right. And I think people who think you were witch hunting had something in it for them to make that comment, to be honest with you. I don't. They had a, hey, look, if, 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 if I have a per close personal relationship with someone and I look at a website that's writing about them or attacking them, what am I going to do? I'm going to defend my friend. I am at least to the point that it makes sense where I'm not defending their actions, that their actions are terrible. Uh, so, I mean, I can, I understand it was a natural, natural thing for these people to do, but you know, I just, I talked to Sarah about it and, and we really worked through uh, some difficult situations there. I learned a lot personally and professionally through the whole headway theme saga that I've been able to apply uh, in the future and, and, and with my work. But uh, man, that was uh, that was a hell of a time <laughs> there. And you, and you mentioned Grant Griffiths and he's, he's a large part of, of some WordPress history because he back in around 2010, 2010 to about 2012, there was a lot of talk in the community about this thing called GPL. And what is yeah. a GPL? Well, it's essentially a software license that grants you the four freedoms. And these freedoms are granted to anybody who uses WordPress. Uh, the only the only thing is you cannot restrict those freedoms from anybody else. And there was many, many debates with theme developers, Grant being one of them, Brian Garner being one of them, iThemes, Corey Miller was involved in those discussions. And a lot of the developers are saying, well, uh, if we if the GPL allows this, uh, well, we cannot apply the GPL to that. I mean, there was a lot of debates yeah, I and, and, and trying to understand what the hell the GPL meant. What could you do? What couldn't you do? What was in within this thing called the spirit of the GPL? And it all kind of culminated into the big, <laughs> I'm going to mention this name. Um, remember DIY themes, thesis, Chris Pearson? Oh. Very much so. Now there, now there is a WordPress milestone for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, very much so. It was funny. Those discussions went on and went on. And I know most of those players very well. I know Brian quite well. I know um, Corey quite well, of course. And, you know, they were interesting times, to say the least. Um, is there another story that stands out, or is that really the only one? Um, I, I would say I'm proud of any article I wrote, whether it's about an experience I had or as an experience other people had that translated into improvements for either the WordPress core software or for the software that I was reviewing or testing. Yeah. Uh, I, I felt proud of the fact that I was able to cover things in such a way to where, you know, I'm not bashing things, but I'm saying, hey, it doesn't seem right that doing this makes this happen when I'm expecting this happen to happen instead. And by going thing, by doing things in that way and having the end user's perspective, I was able to use my words to improve a lot of products, a lot of software and WordPress core itself. And those were some of the best moments um, that I've had over my WordPress writing career. Uh, and it was, it was very cool where sometimes people would leave comments, core developers and say, Hey, this is a cool idea. 
why don't you create a track ticket or why don't you create a patch and we'll help you. I'll walk you through the process of how to contribute it to core. And that actually happened one time. I was just fixing a typo, but it was, he allowed contributing to WordPress core for me was intimidating. It's intimidating for, I think a lot of people. And that's why we have these mentorship programs and these uh, other educational resources to try and onboard people uh, to get into the co contributing of WordPress. But I had actually people, core developers reach out to me and say, actually walk me through the process and being able to, I got to say, having contributing to WordPress and having your code, even if it's a typo, it gives you those warm, the warm tingly feeling. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty cool experience contributing to WordPress when your code lands in the core. It's, it's a special feeling. It's, it's yeah. kind of addictive <laughs> to be honest. It's like super dopamine effect. I agree with you. Um, is there a story you covered that, if you had it to do over again, that you would have said, maybe I should have approached it differently or I should have looked at this differently or I missed something. Oh, oh geez. Oh, that's a great question. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, th I think one of the stories I covered that maybe I would have approached differently was something involving W3 Total Cash, the parent company behind that uh, plugin. Uh, the owner was going through some things or the plugin was going through some things. And I did some deep dive researching into it. And I did some interviews and I published what I thought was all correct and, and right. And then the person behind the scenes contacted me and it was uh, it was. It was uh, it was not good. <laughs> it, was, it was not good. The, the, the fallout and communication and you know, to be honest, I, I talked with some other people and, and I got their confirmation. I said, hey, I think what you did was the right call. And so I don't know if I'd go back and change it. But, uh, you know, there's been some stories I've written that have, you know, and, and the thing the thing about the the, the tavern and, and, and writing about companies and products and everything is that everybody loves it. When I write a review, a glowing review, or I give or I give a company coverage a press release or whatever about a product or service they have they love me oh that's great you're doing a great job jeff then a company screws up they mess up they oh, yeah. do a they do a crappy job of explaining why they messed up or why this happened or why that happened so i come in and i write my article my story i try and get the facts i try and get people to speak on the record and there you go oh jeff that article sucked you're talking bad about the company what's the matter with you so you know you get it you got to have some thick skin and you got to have a strong belief system, which Sarah Gooding has and she instilled on me to, to go down the line and think about the end user and the consumer first. We're not here to be in the back pockets of businesses. We're here to support the consumers and be on their side first, first and foremost. And, and there were many times where it was a very difficult line to walk. Yeah, I, I can bet because... I have a number of friends of mine in my circles that are retired newspaper journalists, so older than you and I, and they say in their careers, there was times where you wrote stories and it was just like, do I want to take that attack? Do I want to take that line? Am I missing something here? What am I missing here? And as far as I know, most of them have all had things they'd like to do over again. And I think, well, hey, no one's perfect. And those are the mistakes that we make. And, yeah. and you know, hey, it, uh, learning and wisdom comes from screwing up and experience. And that's just, <laughs> you know, there, there were many times where I wrote an article and I had Sarah proofread it and review it. And then I told her, I told her, I don't know if I want to hit publish. I would have anxiety hitting that publish button because it would. I know that whatever was published on the tavern was published and was accessible to the dashboards of all WordPress installs. And I was just wondering how much flack or crap am I going to take for this? How many people are going to pile on the comments for that? And I got to tell you, after a while, it wears a person down. <laughs> oh, it does. I can remember hitting publish a couple of weeks ago on a podcast episode. And I knew the minute I finished the recording, the minute I hit that button, <laughs> you know, the crap was going to roll and it rolled and it rolled. I think right I once out. started that. I think I once started that episode. Yeah. Thank you. Love you too. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but kidding aside, but you know, and sometimes 
when you're, what are you doing a podcast or you're writing about a situation, sometimes you got to take that hard line. I don't think you need to take it all the time, but I think sometimes you need to. And that no, and, and at the end of the if at the at, if at the end of the day, you can prove that you were fair in your process. Ultimately, that's what matters. Yep, yep, that is true. Um, the state of WordPress history. Do you think we do a good job of talking about what happened before, or learning about you know things like the headway situation and what we did wrong, or do you think we've ju- we just it's kind of there. It's in the limelight. It goes away, and people forget about it. What do you What do you think? Oh, well, I mean, I I think I, it's good. I, I don't think we a lot of us in the WordPress space. You know, we've been there, done that. But I mean, we're not continuously recalling the past to figure out why we're here, why we've got to this point today. Um, WordPress history to me has always been kind of a special thing because I was such a large part of it. I mean, if you think about it, the Tavern and WellBlowToolsCollection.com, which is before the Tavern, WP Candy, Post Status, all of these websites were really just kind of there to uh, kind of um, almost like writing down chapters or sections of WordPress history. Each blog post was just a, a smidget of time of, of WordPress and the WordPress timeline. And we, we are cataloging that between all those different sites and even through the WordPress weekly podcast, um, there's so much excellent information and history that was talked about in audio form through all those episodes. Uh, but, but what, what makes me sad and, and Matt Mullenweg has actually kind of done a decent job of trying to preserve, um, WordPress history because a he bought weblawtoolscollection.com from its founder Mark Ghosh in order to kind of archive it or keep it online. He bought WordPress Tavern, which uh, you know one of his main purposes, one one of the main reasons for purchasing or acquiring WP Tavern was to preserve its history. Uh, yep. And then, but you look at some of these other websites out there that were around, and you know without the Wayback Machine, we'd be screwed. You wouldn't be able to to look up stuff on WP Candy or some of these other websites. And and that makes me sad. I mean, there's a lot of videos and pieces of content that are just gone. They're they're gone to the to the uh the zone of the of the internet, what they call it, link rot. So, you know, yeah. there's things that just kind of disappear. And if you weren't there, if you didn't live it, if you didn't see it, if you didn't experience it, if you didn't write about it, then you know, that's just uh it's just a dark hole. It's just uh it's a big chunk of history that you have no idea about. I will say that one of the best things that has come out in recent years was Shaban, Shaban McCune. Well, I hope I'm, I've got your name right. Um, she, uh, through the help and motivation of Matt Mulloway, she put together a book called WordPress Milestones, which is available yeah. on GitHub. It has its own website and it does an excellent, excellent job of chronicling the history of WordPress from its early days through about, I don't know, 2015 or there's some timeline there. And she covers just about every milestone, Chris Pearson, GPL, commercial themes available on the WordPress uh, theme directory um, and all these other things. And I was happy to see that. I think it's either in the works or it might've already been done. But I think there's a, ch- a part two coming because you can't cover, I mean, you can, it would just be a huge document, but um it, it's really cool. I think there's going to be a part two to that WordPress history, and I'm very much looking forward to that. So if anybody would really like to get an in-depth, very accurate representation of what happened in the early days of WordPress up until a certain point, the WordPress Milestones book, which you can get online, and there's a website for it, is an awesome resource. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Um, besides WordPress, do you still have an interest in history outside of WordPress or not really? Well, in terms of what kind of history, because in American government and some of my history classes, that's where I learned to sleep with my eyes open. Yeah, no kidding. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I, 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 um, I have a soft spot in my heart for going through the Web 2.0 era. Um, mm-hmm. That was that was I was young. I was pretty, yeah. pretty young and explored exploratory in terms of what was going on online at the time. There's this little thing that Google maps created called Ajax, which, you know, blew the, blew the internet, uh, 
it was a it was a huge deal with the Google Maps and the Ajax. And then you had your domains that were all domains and all these services that were popping up like weeds. It was like a dot com boom all over again with the gradients and the the button makers and oh my god, dude, it was like One tinker toys stuff. all over the place. And yeah, all these services that were missing vowels, which made them sound cool. And it's kind of funny because back in the day, um, before I got involved with WordPress, I had a website called Jeffro2PT0.com. So it was a play on Jeffro 2.0 on, on a whole web 2.0 thing. And what I was doing was I was taking all these services that were launching and I was reviewing them. And I had a strategy where I would write a review about a new service that launched. And then that service would have to link back to my review. And this strategy ended up being really, it worked out really well for me. Now, look, I didn't make any money at the time because I had no idea how to generate revenue or mess with the ads or anything of that effect. But man, there's this one website called Invite Share. And you and I both know that when all these services were popping up, the whole thing was, well, give me an invite. Everything was invite only. You couldn't get in all these cool things unless you had an invite. So Invite Share was a service that, you could go to and it would get invites from all these other places and you could get invites for the services to the site. So I wrote about them. They put my review on the front of their page and then TechCrunch covered them and my site went down <laughs> because I, everybody was, there were so many people reading uh, my review. Thank you. So Thank you, TechCrunch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, 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 as, uh, in the day I got the TechCrunch effect and um and at the time, Oh yeah, my my the website was running WordPress, so I got the white screen of death. Which, you know, back then it used to anytime a WordPress powered website was got the dig effect when it was on dig, it would go white screen because it was just just either the ser probably the server couldn't handle it, which was the advent of why caching was so important. You had WP Super Cache by Danica that came out, which became which is still an awesome plugin. But thank God we have moved far beyond the dig effect where even if your website gets popular, now we have things that scale automatically scale. You get your cloud. You don't have to worry about, you know, yay, you finally made it. You finally went viral. And the only thing you're seeing is a white screen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, that is funny, but it is so true. Been there, had my site go down. It's not fun at all. So, you know, Anyway, Jeff, thanks for chatting a little bit about the past. I always enjoyed it. I'm a bit of a history buff myself. So, you know. And if you ever get to Toronto, we can start history in a in a place called the Hockey Hall of Fame because that is one of my favorite places in the world. But I like American history. I like WordPress history. I like the history of the world. So it's it's really important that we continue to recognize what's happened in our past as we move to the future. Um, if somebody wants to chat more, how's the best way to get you? I would assume on X formerly is Twitter, probably. Yeah, so the best way to get in touch with me is on Twitter, uh, now known as X, um, Jeffro at J-E-F-F-R-0. Uh, you can follow me. Well, actually, that's probably the best place. Um, I mean, I am on, I don't, Facebook is something else. I am on Mastodon. I don't know my Mastodon name. I think it's also Jeffro or something. WP Toots, some social network over there. I'm, I haven't gone to Blue Sky. I don't do Instagram. I don't do uh, – what's that other one? Um, what's the one that's tied to Instagram? Facebook. Uh -huh. eh, oh, Threads. Threads. I don't do Threads. Me neither. Uh, so so uh, for, for the time being, I'm going to do – I'm, I'm going to call it Twitter because it's still Twitter to me. Uh, even though it's X, but I'm going to be on Twitter. And then once they start, once they start charging for it, I mean, it's going down, it's going down quick, but I think once they start charging for it, that's it for me. And I don't know where I'm going to go and what I'm going to do. Hey, you know what? I might start blogging again. <laughs> yeah, there, there's a novel concept. Hey, Jeff, thanks very much. Have an awesome day, my friend. Thank you very much for having me on, sir. Yeah, always a pleasure. This show is brought to you by StunningDigitalMarketing.com, your Toronto leader in digital marketing services. Not only do we protect your WordPress website, we can help you with your site, provide social media management for your business, or even do one-on-one -on -one consulting.
To find out more, go to stunningdigitalmarketing.com. A very special thank you to Jeff Chandler for joining me on this edition of the STM Show. Hey everybody, Rob here again. Thanks for listening to the STM Show. It's such a pleasure to have you every week. If you want more on our agency website, go to stunningdigitalmarketing.com. We are your WordPress security experts. We'd be glad to help you out. If you want to learn more about me, Rob Cairns, go to meetrobcairns.online. From there, you can find links to everything I do on the web, as well as book time with me. So feel free. If you want to make comments about this podcast or know a guest possibly suitable for the podcast, please email us at podcast at stunningdigitalmarketing.com. Or conversely, you can go to X, formerly known as Twitter, and tweet at me at Rob Cairns. This podcast is dedicated to my late father, Bruce Cairns. Dad, I miss you very much, and I love you. Please join us next week for another interesting podcast, and have a great week, everybody. Bye for now.